Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a 2D photo and give it some 3D motion using Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. So we're going to actually start with our photo in Photoshop because the first step we want to do is separate the subject or person from the background. Now, a quick way to do this for most photos where you have a clear contrast is to go to select and then choose subject in the top menu. This is a really quick way to automatically select the subject of a photo and it should work well for your image. If for some reason you aren't able to do this with your photo, you can also try tools like the quick selection tool and try to paint in areas, or you could try doing it by hand at last resort with something like the polygonal lasso tool or pen tool really carefully one by one. But since this will work for our case and perhaps your case as well, we're just gonna select subject. There are some small areas of discrepancy like right here on the shoe. I can just zoom in using the shortcut command plus or minus to zoom in or out. And I can grab my polygonal lasso tool, make sure it's set to add to selection and maybe just fix up a little bit of those problem areas like that. There's also this select subject tool, object selection tool. If you want, you can use this on subtract or highlight from mode and go in there and tell Photoshop exactly to pick up on some areas. So take as much care as you need for this section. You know, if you really want to get in there in between the, the space of the fingers or these loops of the shoe, I can use the shortcut command zero to scale it back to fit because this is a pretty large photo. But once I have a pretty good selection, I'm going to right click and layer via copy this onto its own layer. So now we have the cutout and the background. But I'm actually gonna load up that selection again by holding Command and clicking on the thumbnail of this new layer we made. It'll just bring back up our selection of the contents of this layer. And I'm gonna go back to my background layer and I'm going to use the content to wear fill to even remove him from the background fully. So one thing I'm gonna do first is go to Select, Modify, and Expand Out this selection. Depending on the size of your photo, this could be anywhere from five to 25 pixels. Well, let's just do 10 for this example. You'll see it kind of expands out the selection a bit. You know, let's just do five more. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of feathering. So select modify feather. I'll feather that selection, maybe five pixels. And then I'll right click and fill that selection with content aware fill. So when I press okay, you'll see Photoshop will try to just automatically delete whatever's in the background. And this is a pretty great example photo because it's pretty clear blue sky, but even right here with the concrete and the trees, it does a pretty good job because when we go through to animate our subject in Premiere, we want these two layers to kind of be separate so we don't catch those double edges. So once you have a pretty good separation here from subject to foreground, I'm going to save this as a PSD. So I'm just going to save this wherever I want on my desktop as a Photoshop document PSD and I'll save that and press OK. Now is when we go over to Premiere Pro. So although you could do this in After Effects as well, I'm going to use Premiere Pro for those of you who don't have After Effects or are only working with Premiere. And I'm going to grab my Photoshop document that I created and I'm just going to import it into my project media panel. And then this import pop-up menu will show up. It'll ask you if you want to import it as a merged file or individual layers. What we want to do is individual layers because we want each layer as its own thing. So I press OK. Now I have this new folder of the document and I have both of the two layers in there. So depending on the size of your, your sequence that you want, you can adjust or create a new sequence in a specific size if you need it that way. But in this case, we're just going to use the original dimensions of the photo. So I'm just going to drag our background layer into the timeline to create a new sequence. It'll just create a new sequence of whatever the dimension the, the Photoshop document was. And then I'll drag the other layer on top. So we've kind of recreated our Photoshop layers, but now in Premiere, we have the background and the foreground. And the cool part is we can add keyframes now to create animations in the size or other things. So one simple thing you can do is simply make the scale change a little bit. So I can go to the scale, toggle keyframes on, and over the however many second duration of the clip you want, I can make the scale increase like 
10 points or five points. And when I play that back, it'll look like this, some gradual increase. And then at the same time, I can go to the background. I can actually start the background a little bit larger and add a keyframe. And then at the end, I can revert it back to its original size. I'm just clicking this reset parameter button to take it back to the original 100. And now I have the image kind of separated out. Um, this is similar to the parallax tutorials I've done in the past. But another cool thing you can do aside from just the scale, let me actually just start from scratch again with no keyframes, is using the basic 3D effect that's in the perspective folder. And applying this onto the two layers, we'll get a couple different options in the effects control panel. So if I go back to my top layer, I now have these swivel and tilt and distance to image options. Now you are gonna notice sometimes if you go to swivel them, I mean, it's cool, you can rotate it, but you're noticing it puts it in this new kind of frame and it might end up cropping it sometimes. One quick workaround to that is to lower the distance to image or increase it in this case until you avoid that crop. So we're in this kind of canvas that they've created and then increase the scale back to whatever the original kind of size was. Now you can play around with the swivel and the tilt a little bit easier without having to face a crop. And you can create, first of all, you can create this cool like spinning animation if you just animate this parameter. But the same idea with the gentle movement to, to make it feel 3D would be to start like somewhere a little bit this way and then gradually make it turn the other way and then do the same thing with the background. So the basic 3D on the background, add a, a little bit of swivel, maybe it's the opposite way. So from right to left. And you see, I can just drag these keyframes around and you can also play around with the distance to image and the tilt and all that. This can create, I mean, this could be kind of cool if you did want them separated and added a color in the background. But if I just pull the scale back up, now I have two different images kind of swiveling in different ways. And you can still add those scale keyframes if you want, like making it get slightly bigger over time or making the other object get slightly shrunken over time. And the other thing with these keyframes is you can right click on them and add ease in or ease outs to give them a little bit more gentle motion. So all in all, you can get these cool 3D looks by taking the, the object, separating in Photoshop and bringing it into Premiere and adding these little keyframes. There's other options like specular highlights that you can add into the layer. Might not always look realistic, but could be an interesting option depending on the idea you're working with. And honestly, if you wanted, you can even add like lens flares and stuff in the effects panel, you can either add them directly onto the background. So I could add a lens flare and I can animate the position to slightly move from one direction to a little bit different, maybe blend it in a little bit with this layer. And that could be another idea to add some subtle 3D feel to the photo. If you wanted to apply the lens layer over the entire image and not just the background layer, you can go to file new black video and add a black video on top, apply the lens layer there and just set this black video layer to screen blending mode. And you can lower the opacity if you want to lower the strength. So same idea. You'll notice this, this trick I'm doing, I'm highlighting the lens flare effect in the effect controls panel and this marker will come up in the program window so that I don't have to adjust the flare center X and Y position with the sliders each time. That's a little bit more intuitive that way. But once you do start adding all these different 3D things and lens flares, you might notice this red line pop up. You might wanna just press I and O to create an in and out point and then uh, render in to out under the sequence menu if you do want to catch a good preview and be able to watch the work that you've been doing.
And another final idea, I know I've been packing in a lot here. If you just nest everything together, so right click and nest it all together, and then duplicate that nested layer, I'm just holding option and dragging it out to duplicate it. And then put them end to end, and then right click on the speed and duration and reverse the speed of the second one. You can create kind of like a boomerang perfect loop so that if you were to post this somewhere that you did want it to loop or make it like a GIF or something, it would now be a perfect loop forward and backward. As soon as it hits this middle point, it'll just turn around. So it's constantly going back and forth and tilting. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, my name is Justin Odisho. You can check out hundreds more on the playlist on my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.